My name is Hayden Allred. I'm the sound and projection designer at the Playmill Theatre in West Yellowstone, Montana. We recently just wrapped up a production of Singing in the Rain. A lot of people had questions as to how we did the rain in the show, so we thought we'd make a video explaining the whole process behind it. People had some guesses as to how we did the rain. Some people thought the stage was weighted, some thought that the actor was wearing light-up shoes that made it look like he was splashing, and some people actually thought we used real water. The story behind the rain actually starts September of 2015, almost immediately after our 2015 season had ended. We were in talks with a few companies to use interactive projections, sort of along the lines of something you might see nowadays in a mall. This would entail setting up a few Microsoft Kinect sensors around the theater that would follow the actor, and then project a rain animation following him. While that sounds great in theory, there are a lot of drawbacks. For the infrared sensors to work, we would need a lot of light on stage, a lot more than we wanted, and that would drown out the projected rain on the floor. Being that most of the companies were across the seas, customer support could start to be troublesome, and we would be stuck to whatever cheesy effects they could provide us. There's also the complication of how expensive this technology can be, as well as how buggy it can be and that the response time will start to lag on the projections as well. As cool as interactive projection is, it's got a long way to go before it can be used in the setting we had hoped for. So now it's about March, and we're back to square one, trying to figure out how this is going to work. I'm a student at BYU-Idaho, and one day I was in my film analysis class where we watched the rain scene from the movie. I started to look more and more at the splashes, and I began to notice that the splashes almost looked like individual fireworks going off. Once I started to analyze the elements of the rain more and more, I called up Roger Merrill, the owner, and told him, I think I know of a way to do it, just by projecting a pre-made video onto the stage, and that would also include animating the rain myself. So I created this sample clip to send to Roger and Boyd, our technical director, as an example. So now we've figured out a way to hopefully make it work. After placing the two projectors that would be facing the floor in several different locations around the theater, we finally found what we determined to be the best spot for them. We had a video playing on the ground of raindrops, but how were we going to make it look like Don Lockwood was splashing in the puddles? After the number was choreographed by our incredible tap choreographer, Cooper Sutton, the actor playing Don Lockwood, Jacob Squire, and I worked tirelessly to implement each individual step he took in the number. Every splash that you see on stage was created from scratch, specifically for the step he was taking. As soon as the number was choreographed, I recorded a reference video of Jacob dancing on a 4x4 colored grid. This would give me some good reference as to where he was stepping, so I could place the splashes exactly where they needed to be. You can see how I can move them around on the screen relative to where he's stepping on the grid. I was up in the booth on the computer for about two to three weeks creating a rough draft of these different dance steps, all day, every day. After we finally had a rough draft, Jacob and I spent another two to three weeks running the number every night about four to five times, going to the computer to edit, change, add, remove, and then do it again the next night. After this process was complete, we finally had the rain. A lot of people wondered how he could hit his mark so perfectly on every step. While Jacob is incredibly talented, he did have a little help. If you look closely, you can see little white markers appear on the stage that show him where to step, but you can only really see them if you're looking for them. We like to describe it as sort of a theatrical version of Dance Dance Revolution. Even with the splashes in place, I knew my splashes modeled after fire explosions could possibly be a tough sell. So I knew that I needed some convincing sound to help reinforce the illusion of rain. After creating a sequence of rain that was built up of about six different elements, it was time to work on creating splashes. I recorded Jacob doing the tap dancing for the number, again as reference, so I knew exactly what the tap dancing sounded like. Then I placed the splash on each tap. All of the tap dancing in the show is done live. In fact, we actually placed microphones on their ankles to help pick up the tap shoes even better. What is recorded is the sound of splashes made every time he touches his foot to the ground. There were over 600 different tap sounds in the number, each with his own splash sound carefully picked for the step he was currently taking. Hey Hayden, what are you doing? I'm splashing in a puddle to get sound effects. Some were recorded by playing in a puddle behind the theater, some by splashing my hands in a pan of shallow water, and the majority were actually made by yours truly. From conception to the last show, the process of the rain lasted almost an entire year. It was an incredibly difficult process to make sure that Don Lockwood would be dancing and singing in the rain, and one of the most technical endeavors the theater has ever attempted. The reactions we heard every night from the audience after, and even during the number, made every piece of the journey worth it. I hope you enjoyed this little behind-the-scenes look at just one of the many technical elements in one of the most technical shows the planet has ever produced. Thanks for watching.